Today I'm going to be talking about the final unit in EH204, Introduction to British Lit 2. We're going to be talking about the modern period. And so the Victorian period, our era, came to an end with the death of um, with the death of Queen Victoria. And it kind of threw England into a little bit of a political upheaval and a little turmoil. Um, not to mention, you know, they were rolling into World War I. Um, and that, you know, forever changed the land landscape um, of, of the, the, not only the land, the people, the, the, the belief systems that people held in place, and there was just so much loss. And so people felt really alienated after World War I, um, and they started to think that the, the institutions, the, the political, the government um, institutions, and also the religious institutions that they'd been taught their whole lives to believe in um, had kind of led them into um, World War One, and so they felt very um, let down by you know these institutions they'd always believed in. So they started to turn kind of inward, and that's where we kind of see the roots of modernism. We're going to talk uh, you know about a desire to break free from um, the past. You know, before and in, in, in several of our um, periods of time that we we've discussed over the course of the of the year, you know, there, we romanticize the past, um, looking back on simpler times and, and that kind of thing. But now we're there, now we're in the modern period, and, and we don't want to think about the past anymore. We want to break free and start a new identity from that. So the world is is created in the act of perceiving it in the way that we see it is what we say it is. Um, and so we're going to see a, a stronger focus on the individual who's very kind of tuned in to his or her subconscious so um, you know, we had a lot of urbanization happening at the time. We had industry growth. Um, and, you know, that really kind of started in the Victorian period with the Industrial Revolution. And it just kind of kind of continued to build and grow as we roll um, into the um, modern uh, era. Um, and then, of course, you have your war, which was very relatively quickly followed up by World War II. Um, so modernism became a movement um, that, brought about a desire in writers and artists and creators to escape traditional values, to escape commercialism, and to escape once and for all the, the aristocratic customs that kind of predated the um, era that we're in. A lot of great influencers, uh, influential people, thinkers, great thinkers uh, of the time um, that kind of helped change the way that people were thinking. Uh, we talked um, about Freud. Um, uh, we talked about Darwin, uh, you know, during the Victorian period. And so now you have the psychologists and sociologists and and people that studied the mind and uh, people that studied philosophy and, and, and things that were kind of thinking for themselves and, and, you know, trying to, you know, educate the masses. So you had Nietzsche and you had Ernest Mott and you had Sigmund Freud. Um, and so they, they kind of really influenced a lot of um, of what individualism became uh, to be. Um, so you also had a lot of cynicism of the people uh, after, you know, World War I had ravaged the country, ravaged the population. You know, a lot of these writers that were springing up out of this area had been on the battlefield. They had firsthand knowledge of the experiences that they, um, that the soldiers went through in, in this war. So um, your writers are, are they, they, were, they were in action so they they use that as fuel for um, their their writing um, a lot of modernist literature is against modernism um, modernism being the the country was modernizing right where um, the technology um, the um, you know, everything is getting more you know modern uh, and they kind of were against that it was a great you know it's a great loss for them um, so artists of the era became critics of art and culture that came before. Um, looking back at the, the, you know, the art and the writing of the time periods before and kind of wanting to break free from that and have a fresh start or a fresh take. Um, 
we talked already about uh, the the foundations or the the institutions that they'd always believed in the religious beliefs, the social conduct, the way that you were supposed to behave. Um, you know, in, in the Victorian period, when we're talking about the um, very proper modern. Um, um, your moral, moral um, lives and that kind of thing, that, that those the social conduct, expected behavior, um, and then the ideologies, um, uh, they, they were broken, they were fabricated, they weren't real, they, they weren't, um, they, they, do, they shouldn't have the power to control us anymore. And so that really influenced uh, writers to, to grow, to, to, um, to change into, you know, something, something new. So some characteristics that we're going to be looking at during the modern period are alienation, you know, that all plays into that whole idea of, you know, um, I, I need to trust within myself, but it's also, uh, you know, that also brings with it a lot of isolation and a lot of alienation um, individualism you know looking within yourself to find the answers uh, experimentation like trying the new things and, um, and and seeing you know if they if they work uh, symbolism was really big during this time period absurdity things that were absurd and they had a lot that was happening that you know they they found to be very absurd. Like, what is the purpose? What What is it all for? Um, and then very fragmented. Um, and that had a lot to do with, you know, post-World War. It, 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 people's lives were fragmented. Literally, they were fragmented into pieces. And so that is definitely um, a characteristic that you're going to see in the literature of the time period. So let's take a look at some authors and texts from the modern era of British literature.